Turn the lights on that step, will you? Right. Hey, Johnny, Johnny, give me that. Right. 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 Okay. All right. You go back to number three. Go around the way to get the mic Okay. Just what do you do here? Well, you see, I have to keep a complete record of everything. See, the clothes the actors wear in the various scenes. And how they come into the scenes, right or left, and what they do. Mm, rather a complicated business, isn't it? Yes, but very necessary. Now, take this scene they're rehearsing now, for instance. It's a retake of something we did a month ago. Here's the record of it. Mm, I see. So you have a lot to do, haven't you? <laughs> well, it could hardly be called a holiday. <laughs> yeah. Well, we pick it right up from here, see? Mm-hmm. That last was better, but you're not getting it yet, old man. You've got to get under it. And by the way, this drinking of yours is the cause of this retake. So come on, snap out of it. Let's try it again. Quiet, All right, hey. let's go. Elsie, Elsie, where are you? Elsie won't answer. And why not, may I ask? I called her away. She's going to meet me at my apartment. You see, Elsie really works for me. Well, that's better, only, only don't stick again when we take it. Well, Rex. Yeah? Have you got that scene fixed yet? Just a second. We'll change that last speech, see? Make it read, you see, my dear, Elsie really works for me. She is my sister. Yeah, that clears it up all right. Well, come on, folks. Now, we'll take it once more. And you add to your speech, she's my sister, see? Come on, let's get going. Oh, all right. I'm not deaf. All right. It was rather an embarrassing position for me, wasn't it? Yes. Well, I did my good deed for today. Hey, won't you Quiet, sit down? folks. Quiet. Please. Oh, pardon me. Will you excuse me? Yes. Yeah. Say, you'll have to get back here. You're in too close. Back here, please. Mike, bring me a corporal, Mike. Oh, I beg your pardon. Dare, a friend of Rex Forsyth. He's a reporter on the New York paper. Hey. Mm-hmm. Yes. How do you feel about it? It's okay with me. All right, let's take it. All right, quiet, everybody. This is the take. Where is that, please? All right, camera. Chain 26 retake. Elsie. Elsie. Where is she? Jeffrey, what are you doing here? Is it strange for a husband, even a discarded husband, to visit his wife? Elsie won't answer. And why not, may I ask? I've called her away. She's going to my apartment to meet me. You see, my dear, Elsie really works for me. She's my sister. Cut. That's it. You beast! If people could see you like this, they'd know why I'm divorcing you. What's the matter with you, Andre? Now, don't start anything here. Now, come on, old man. Don't! What's in my affairs? I tell you, I can't stand it! 
That's Andre Layton for you. Valerie, did you get what I wanted? Yes, Miss Gladden. They were sorry it took so long. I should think they would be. That's all right. Run along, dear. I'll see you at home. Yes, Miss Gladden. Will you dine there? Not this evening. There's a dinner party at Calvin Green's. Come on, I'll walk over to your dressing room. Did I say you could? Oh, come on. Okay, all set, let's go. Oh, I'll meet you in the office, Bob. Okay, Rex. All right, boys, wrap them up. Bring down your diffuser. You old grouch. Come on, Rex. What's the matter? What have I done now? Why did you ditch me for lunch and eat with Warren Sibley? He's my director. And the star always has to be nice to her director. You're nice to everybody. That's the trouble. You're just jealous. You know men are a part of my life. I know it too well. But you know who I really love, don't you? <laughs> Say that you love me, Rex. Oh, I suppose I'll end up by marrying you. Oh, but, monsieur, I have not yet a divorce from Andre. My dear husband. Yes, and when he kissed you, I could have... Yes, and you showed it, too. You're a funny old thing, Rex. But run along now, dear. I must dress. My bad luck, I can't take you to Cal Green's party tonight. But I've got to work on your next story. The office is riding me. Worse luck. Don't you worry, darling. There'll be a lot of nice men there. I won't be lonesome. You little devil. <laughs> Run along. You little devil. You are beautiful. <laughs> Who would have driven this bit of steel into your heart, but have found a home instead in his? I didn't know then that you had made a fool of him, as you have of me, as you have of dozens of others. Jeffrey, I swear. Worshipping you, I married you, took you from the gutter, made you... <laughs> a lady. And you betrayed me with my best friend. But the moment for atonement is here. Behind you stretches that way of selfishness. Lies deceit. Ahead of you, darkness, oblivion. For like the media that flamed and died, you too shall die. Die, 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 die. For the love of Pete. Why don't you get some air in here? They're a pretty fair story, this falling star thing. Where'd you steal the idea? Hey, no cracks out of you, fella. Come on, get on your feet. I gotta get to work. Oh, say, you're about to lose your star border at last. Great. Now I'll have a few peaceful days and sober nights for a change. Oh, yeah? Well, I could go for a few myself. Get off that. What's the matter? Is that city editor of yours got on his ear again? Oh, has he? Get a load of this. Mr. Robert Adair, care of Rex Forsyth, screenwriter, Eminent Studios, Hollywood, California. Now that you have solved the Donahue murder case and given Hollywood an eyeful of New York's worst reporter, I would deem it a great favor if you would see your way clear to come back to New York and give your newspaper a break. Love and kisses. A sarcastic mug. <laughs> you know, I have a sneaking idea I will kiss the old buzzard, and boy, will he burn. Oh, <laughs> too bad there aren't a few more murders for you to solve. I'd like to have you stay on. Yeah, not wishing anybody any hard luck. Oh, say, you're going to Cal Green's party tonight? No, confound it. I've got to try and get Irma's next story finished. Well, I'm going, and boy, I'm going to put on a good old-fashioned bust. One that'll last me till I hit home. Miss Gladden going? Oh, well, she'll be there, all right. Oh, by the way, who was that good looker on the slipper today? Who? 
Oh, you mean Valerie Christine? That's Irma's secretary. Smitten? Smitten? <laughs> Smote. Boy, one of her and my heart did handspring. What are you trying to do? Let me go. Wait a minute. Hurry. Andre, get a hold of him. Andre, get out of here. Now, you're in no condition here. Take your hands off of me. She's still my wife. He don't belong in here. He was making love to her. It's all his fault, I'm telling you. Now, now she's going to divorce me. So she can marry. So she can marry. Him! That's who she wants to marry! Why are you here? Right. Right. Now, never mind. Look at him. I'll take care Look of him. Look at him. He thinks... He thinks she loves him. Just another fool. Like me. Like Sibley. Like everybody! Come on, Andrew, old man. Come on. You too. My best friend. You love her too. Look at me. I was a star. Wasn't I? Yes, of course you yes, were, Andrew. Of course. Well... She, she did this to me. I tried to kill her. Didn't I? <laughs> but they, they can't have her. They can't. She belongs to me. To me. To me. Andre, you've got to stop this. You've got to. Warren, you can limp. Get him out of here. All right. Come uh, on, Andrew. Oh, man, no, I'm your friend and I understand. Come on, my office. Come on. All right. You understand. Of course don't you? I do. That's a good fellow. All right, Rex, old boy. Don't worry. We'll take care of everything. Rex, dear. Tell Norman to bring the car around. I... I want to get out of here. Are you all right? Maybe you better not go tonight. Oh, I'm all right. Run along now. Rex, please do as I ask. Oh, all right. Minute. Come on. Andre, sit down, will you? You've made a fool of yourself once today. That's enough. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I suppose you knew what you were doing when you tried to kill Irma. Did... Did I do that? Yes, you did that. Don't let me out of here. Come on. Sit down there. Now you stay here until you pull yourself together. All right. I suppose you'll send this to your confounded paper. No, if I sent that bushy-haired old editor of mine anything but a murder story, I'd get the gate. Chances looked pretty good there for a minute, didn't they? Frank. You're not taking it too seriously, are you, old man? I wouldn't intrude into personal matters if I were you, Bob. Yeah, I guess you're right at that. See you at the house.
Oh, Miss Gladden. Yes, Beverly. Mrs. Sibley is waiting in the drawing room. Mrs. Sibley. How long has she been here? Quite some time, I believe. The maid let her in. All right. Tell her I'll see her. Here. Yes, Miss Braddon. I suppose you know who I am. Oh, well, of course, Mrs. Sibley. Won't you sit down? I came here for just one reason, Mama Gladden. To tell you that you can't get away with it. Really, Mrs. Sibley? I don't know what you mean. Then I'll tell you. You leave my husband alone. Do you understand? Don't be dramatic. Warren and I are simply good friends. Good friends. Devotedly, Warren. Good friends. And why not? Now you listen to me. But Miss Gladden said if you called again, she didn't want to see you. Well, tell her I'm here. Please. Or she'll see me. She's got to see me. Oh, all right. You wait here. Remember, Irma Gladden, I've warned you. Be careful. Oh, I'll be very, oh, so very careful, Mrs. Sibley. Is that my mail, Valerie? Yes, Miss Gladden. Thank you. Oh, Miss Gladden. Yes, Norman. The young man who calls himself Robert Worth would like to see you. Will you tell the young man who calls himself Robert Worth I don't care to see him. Yes, ma'am. So that detective agency has come to life at last. Well, it's about time. Well, I've got the people, I tell you. I'm going to see her. I tell you she doesn't want to see you. Well, close that window and put out my pajamas. Please, dear. Because I always. Oh, please let me in. I've got to see her. You don't understand. I've got to. Go on, beat it. Oh, sweetie. Oh, still got on your high hat. Miss Gladden wishes to see you in her boudoir. In the boudoir, boy. Uh-uh. All right, jealous, are you, sweetie?
husband, 1181. Yes? It's me, Norman. Come in. Hello. Police headquarters? Yes, I'd like to talk to Captain Summers, please. Thank you. Oh, hello. This is Irma Glyden, Captain. No, I'd rather not explain over the phone. It's in connection with what we talked about a few days ago. Yes, I do want someone arrested. Yes, 8.30 will be all right. You know my home? Beverly Drive. Yes, I'm going out, but I'll wait. Thank you. Goodbye, Captain. Oh, Norman, I've forgotten about you. May I speak to you, please? Slave. I thought you were going to get swanked. Now, well, Cal Green switched bootleggers on me. Ugh, it took the enamel right off the teeth. Good old black coffee. <sighs> That's worse than Cal's gin. The One I Love by Rex Forsyth. Matter stuck? Plenty. I'll give you an idea. Uh... There are three men in love with the same girl. Are you trying to be funny? Oh, I'm sorry, old man. I didn't think. Was Irma there? Mm-hmm. The center of attraction, as usual, I suppose. Yeah, she wasn't exactly lonesome. You know, Rex, there's something fascinating about that girl. What is it? I wish I knew. Some women are like that. Literature and legend are full of them. Yeah. And they usually ride for a fall, too. Some women are too fascinating for their own good. Yeah. Service, Miss Gladden. Miss Gladden. Oh, thanks. 
Oh. Hello, Bob. This is Captain Summer speaking. I'm up at the Gladden place. Now McGladden's been murdered. And I want you to come up here as soon as you can. Right. I'll be right over. Yeah, I know where it is. What's the matter? You better get a hold of something, old man. You're gonna take a jolt. Right, what's happened, Bob? Irma's dead. You wanna come along? What? Yes. Of course. Six or seven stubs, one about every ten minutes. That means whoever was sitting with her talked at least an hour. Yeah. We say she left Calvin Green's alone about uh, two o'clock, huh? Yeah, just about. Uh-huh. That would make it happen roughly about uh, three or three thirty, eh? Mm-hmm. Let's see what his nibs has to say. Right. Well, bullet ended right side, passed up with through heart, and out under left shoulder. Death instantaneous. Well, see you later. Oh, it's cold along toward morning. Just another murder. Mm -hmm. And besides, kind of a wallop, eh? Yeah, he's pretty much in love with her, I guess. Let's go. Not a clue, Rick. Maybe you'd like to run along home, Mr. Scythe. I'll... I'll stay if you don't mind. Just as you say. Bob here was telling me what happened in the studio this afternoon. Would you mind if I ask a few questions? Anything. Anything to help. I think I'll go upstairs and look around a bit. Right. Delaney's up there snooping. Oh, Delaney. My old friend Delaney. Yeah. Has he found anybody to question yet? No, not yet, but he's hoping. Now, I know it's tough on you. But could you give me the details as you remember them as to what happened in the studio this afternoon? When you get through smelling the floor, Sergeant, you can sniff on that for a while. You here again? I thought you'd gone out of my life. Not yet. You think you're pretty smart, don't you, Bob Adair? Well, let me tell you something. Smells played a very important part in the famous Mulberry case. Now, let's see. <clears throat> it was in uh, 1913. Yes, 1913. The minute I entered that old lady's room, I got a whip, an odor, see? It was lavender. Yes, sir, lavender. I says to myself, Delaney, this means something. Now there was a son-in-law, see? And the minute I laid my eyes onto him, I know there was something queer. So I ran that smell down and down and down until I pinned it right on him. Hey! 
Oh, there you are. <laughs> Sergeant, I have a clue. Good. What is it? A necktie. Great. Every murderer leaves a clue. Which means, Churchy's Lahami. I beg your pardon? Churchy's Lahami. That's French for find the man. Oh. And you find the man that owns that necktie? You found the murder. It's a cinch. I think you're right, Sergeant. I'll turn it over to Captain Summers. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. You don't need to turn it over to him. Let me see it. Let me. I I've got all the clues. All right. Say, what are you trying to do? Make a mug out of me? No, it's too late, Sergeant. Yeah? Hey. You know what? This is a clear case of robbery. Well, no, camouflage. The room's in too much of a mess. It's overdone. There's something deeper than robbery in this, Sergeant. That's what I thought. Come on, man. Oh, Captain Summers. Here he is. We picked him up on Hollywood Boulevard. Good work, Ed. Find anything? This. Hmm. The lady! You're there! I'll get to the bottom of this. Come here. When did you first enter Miss Gladden's employ? A year ago. She discharged you, huh? Yeah, this afternoon. Where were you between 2.30 and 3.30 this morning? Walking home from Hollywood to 6th and Alvarado, where I live. This is Norman, Miss Gladden's chauffeur. Chauffeur, eh? Well, is that a crime? Huggins found this on him. A report from the James Agency substantiating Miss Gladden's belief that he had stolen and pawned one of her rings. Oh! Where'd you get this? I took it from Miss Gladden's boudoir. This afternoon when she discharged me. There you are. Clean as a nose on your face. You stole her jewels. She fired you. You came back and killed her. Why? Well, what do you mean? It's... What do I mean? You killed Irma Gladden, didn't you? Ah, uh, noir. Hey, what's that? That's nuts in French. Another smart crack out of you and you're under arrest. Ah, uh, you're an hour late, Flatfoot. That's enough. Were you here tonight? Yes, I was. I came back to ask Miss Gladden to give me another chance. I wanted to square myself. Waited around until 1.30 and... Then started walking home, like I told you. You're just full of virtues, ain't you? Well, we're holding you for larceny anyway. Who's going to press the charge, Sergeant? Now, you're a great help now, ain't you? Tom. Huh. Look him on suspicion. Miss Gladden. Oh, Miss Gladden. Wait a minute. Nobody gets away while Delaney is on the job. You'll tell it to the captain. Come on. Come on, get up in there. Come on, come on, come on. I caught her. She was trying to beat it away from the house. Oh, I haven't done anything. Oh, Mr. Forsyth, please, please tell them who I am. This is Valerie Christine, Miss Gladden's secretary. I see. If you don't mind. I'll go now. All right. You want me along, old man? No, I'm all right. Good night. Were oh, you running away, Miss Christine? Yes, why were you running away? I wasn't. I live here. I was coming home. I saw Miss Gladden. I was frightened. I didn't know what I was doing. I ran. You see, she admits it. Where were you between 2.30 and 3.30? Easy, Delaney. You weren't home this evening? No. I received a message quite early to call on... Oh, and there was something strange about it because I... 
Well, I... I stayed until just a little while ago. And my friend hadn't sent me a note at all. Let's see that note. I... I don't remember where I put it. Oh, I know. I left it up in Miss Gladden's boudoir. I was there when it came. You think it was a false message to get you away from the house? Yes, because... I'll get it for you. Oh, no, you won't. It's all right, Delaney. I'll... All right. That dame will bear watching. I ought to question her, Cap. I think she did it. Don't think. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, which way did he go? Which way did he go? Your guess is as good as mine, Cap. Well, it's a good thing it is or I'd be in bad shape. Ed, go around and see what you can find on the other side of the house. Okay. Delaney, I'll tell you what you'll do now. Good. What is it, Cap? What is it, Cap? Nothing. You just keep out of my way, that's all. Hmm. Here. Here's a glass of water for you. Oh. It will make you feel better. Oh, thanks. Is that the note that took you away from the house? Yes. Well, don't you want me to see it? Well, I... Please. Andre. From Andre Layton? Yes. Well, isn't there something you want to say? No, not now. Please. You can tell me about it later. Trust me, won't you? I really do want to help you. You're very kind. You know, you have a beautiful name. I'm glad you like it. Aren't you the least bit curious about my name? Oh, I already know it. Oh, mind reader, eh? No. I asked someone at the studio. Oh, so then you were curious too. Well, oh, does your head hurt much? No, it's all right. But I'm afraid there's something wrong with my heart. Here. All right, all right. All right. Did you find him? No, disappeared into thin air. Anything serious, Bob? No, just a crack in the head. Is that door open or closed when you made your investigation? Why, uh... Why, it was open, of course. It was closed and locked. Whoever attacked Miss Christine was in that closet while we were in the room. Well, maybe it was... Who? Have you any idea who it might have been? Don't be afraid. Well, it may have been Robert Worth. 
Miss Gladden's first husband. She married him before she ever thought of Hollywood and a career. Then when she became famous, she divorced him, threw him over, just as she was ridding herself of Andre Layton for, for someone else. Who? Come on, who? It's common knowledge that Rex Forsyth was madly in love with her. Hmm, I see. What makes you think Robert Worth might have been in there? He tried to see Miss Gladden this afternoon. You see, he still loved her, in spite of everything. Oh, I see. About that uh, note, you found it, Miss Christine? We searched the room, but it wasn't here. Worth might have sent it. Probably did. Delaney, take some notes. Round up Robert Worth. Book him on suspicion of murder. I want to question Sibley and Sibley's wife. And Andrew Layton. That chauffeur, too. My office in the morning. Got that down? Got what down? What are you looking for? Captain, I lost my pencil. Captain, I lost my pencil. You would, yes. Next thing, you'll lose your job. Miss Christine, I want to see you. You too, Bob. Good night. Good night. Now, Captain, if I had somebody else to question, I'd get to the bottom of it. Do you want to tell me now? Yes, I'll tell. All I can. Well, let's go over to Henry's, and you can tell it to me over sandwiches and coffee. I'll get my coat. those papers there? Sure. Have you read any of them? No, sir. All right, listen to this. Who killed Irma Gladden? The police don't know, do we? No, we don't. There's another one. Sergeant Delaney reports the old bromide that the police expect to make an arrest shortly, do we? No, we don't. Well, I thought... You thought! With what? Huh. Here's another one. Listen to this. The progress thus far made by the police in the Gladden case would do credit to a correspondence school for detectives. Ah! I'll handle them newspapers. You'll handle them newspapers. You'll handle them. If I ever hear you say you'll handle them again, I'll break you! What have you done? What have we done? What? Nothing! Nothing! Uh, something. Can we pin anything on them? Can we pin anything on them? Why, Shut I... up, I'll answer. No, we cannot. Late. Says you didn't speak easy all night. I forgot where. Can't remember where. Simply, says he started for Tijuana. Changed his mind and came back at four o'clock in the morning, but nobody saw him. Mrs. Sibley says so she was out all night looking for her husband. Couldn't find him. Admits that she thought of committing the crime. And that chauffeur, that chauffeur, he says he was walking home from Hollywood to Alvarado. Yeah. Yeah. And Robert Worth. What happened to Robert Worth? What happened to Robert Worth? Oh, I don't know. Do you suppose I thought you knew? Well, I've got the dragnet out you for him. You the dragnet out for him. The dragnet. You probably lost the dragnet like you lost your pencil. Come in. Good day, Captain. Yeah, what's good about it? Well, the papers haven't been very kind so far, have they? Got something? Why, it's the note that took you away from the house that night. Signed, Andre. Andre Lake. It's a cinch. He did it. I thought so all along. Where'd you find it, Bob? Well, Captain, our cards are on the table. Andre Layton is Miss Christine's brother. What's the story, Bob? Well, even though Miss Gladden was divorcing Layton, he uh, still loved her. So he sent to New York for Miss Valerie to come out here and take a position with her as her secretary. He thought that she might be able to change things. You know, perhaps a uh, good influence. Were you at your brother's house that night? Yes. He came in about 3.30. Terribly upset. He 
He doesn't remember sending me the note. That isn't his handwriting. I checked on that. That'll have to be proved. I'm sorry, Miss Layton. The circumstances warrant placing your brother under arrest. Oh, no. Now, wait a minute. I didn't give you a bum steer on that Donahue case, did I? Mm, well, no, you didn't. Well, then, do me a favor. Hold off on Layton until tomorrow. Until we've all had a chance to look at Miss Gladden's last picture, Falling Star. What's that got to do with it? Well, it might have a lot to do with it. I think you're crazy. You'll understand just as soon as you've seen the picture. Clayton hasn't tried to get away. He, if you arrest him now, it'll ruin him. Do this for me. For us. Whom do you suspect? Well, it could be any one of several. Ha, <laughs> ha! Any one of several. The idea is silly, preposterous. Make out a warrant for Layton's arrest. I'll handle it, Captain. Summer speaking. Delaney, wait. It's Robert Worth. Oh. All right, go ahead. I, I know who killed Irma Gladden. I saw it done. And I'm afraid for my life. Room 36, Stratton Arms, Apartments. Lenny, get a car, hurry. Right, Cap. Bob, you can come along, too. Where's your brother? At home. See that he stays there. the heart. Captain, I think I know the answer. And I'm serious, as I've never been before in my life. Well? I want you to use your authority to have a private showing of Falling Star and have everyone there that was connected with the picture. All right. Thank you. Delaney? All right. Ed, you stay here and take care of the body. All right, Chief. Here. Is it strange for our husband, even a discarded husband, to visit his wife? Elsie won't answer, my dear. And why not, may I ask? I've called her away. She's going to my apartment to meet me. You see, my dear, Elsie is really working for me. She is my sister. Oh, I see. She's here to spy on me. Well, my lord, now that you've discovered everything, what are you going to do about it? Enid, you've made a fool of men for the last time. Jeffrey, I... What do you mean? I see you remember it. The token of our meeting in India. The dagger that saved your life. Jeffrey, what are you going to do? You remember the night? A star flamed brightly in the sky then plunged into darkness. A drink-crazed fool would have plunged this bit of steel into your heart, but it found a home instead in his. Oh, I didn't know then that you had made a fool of him, as you have of me, a dozen others. Oh, Jeffrey, I swear. Worshipping you, I married you, took you out of the gutter, 
made you <laughs> a lady. And then you betrayed me with my best friend. You're behind. But the moment for atonement is here. Behind you is a path of selfishness, lies, deceit. Before you, darkness, oblivion. As that meteor flamed and died, so you too shall die. Jeffrey, no! Help! Jeffrey, no! Help! Stop it! Stop it! Yes, I did it. I do it again. I killed her. I shot Robert Worth, too, because he knew. I knew that Valerie Christine was Andre Layton's sister. I wrote the note to make it look as though he did it. I planned the whole thing, just as I wrote it for the screen, just as you saw it. What did she do to Robert Worth? Married him for a few paltry thousands. Made him a stepping stone to fame. And Andre Layton, look at him. Look at him. You remember what he was and see what he is now. A drink-crazed hulk that was once a man. And Warren Sibley, my friend, Andre's friend, another fool like me. Yes, I went there that night to her home, pleaded with her to marry me, but she laughed at me, said that I was a fool, like him, like Sibley, like a dozen others, that I had served her purpose and that she was through with me, through. Selfishness, lies, deceit. And you, if it hadn't been for you snooping around, reading my scripts, putting two and two together. Oh, hey, get that, get that girl, get that girl. Here we go, I got it. Take care of this man. Take care of this man. Speak what? to me! What do you mean? Oh, somebody! Bob! Speak to me! Yeah. Yes. No, 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 no. Quit. Q-U-I-T. Quit. Q as in Quincy. U as in, uh, Eureka. I as in... Idiot. T is in tamale. Yeah, quit. That's right. I will repeat the straight telegram, Colette. Going to Albert Bailey, managing editor, The Daily Journal, New York City. Pull in your horns, comma, you big boob, stop. You can't fire me, comma, I quit, stop. Love and kisses. That's right. That's right. What is the signature, please? Ooh. Yes. Signature? Mr. Bob Adair. Mr. and Mrs. Bob Adair. 